glad to be able to continue on. Drago mi je da mogu nastaviti. And, uh, I'll just begin by mentioning that yesterday I had talked about the question what was the core of Jesus Jesus's message. Počet ću tako da spomenem što je bila poru, što je bila ono u središtu Isusove poruke što smo jučer govorili. And they, in, the, in each of the gospels the gospel writer has a, a point where he introduces Jesus's teaching. I u svakom evanđelju nalazimo točku u kojoj pisac evanđelja uvodi Isusov nauk. And that at, the, at that point each um, he introduces the he set points out what is the main center center point of what Jesus had to say. I u toj točki on kaže što je to u središtu, što to Isus ima za reći. And we see that this is um, that the kingdom of God is near to us. E vidimo da je ta poruka bila kraljevstvo Bože je blizu. And another way to put that is that God's kingdom, his activity that he is available to you. Ili drugim riječima da je tebi dostupno Bože kraljevstvo, Božja aktivnost. And this is not primarily focused on something that will happen one day. I to se ne fokusira prvenstveno na ono nešto što će se dogoditi jednoga dana. This is instead focused on something that starts happening right now. Nego se radi fokusira na nešto što se počinje događati upravo sada. The God that we can be in touch with the eternal life of God. Da možemo biti u kontaktu sa Božjim vječnim životom. That we can be um, that we can cooperate with God in his kingdom and participate in that in it. Da možemo surađivati u Bogu, s Bogom u njegovom kraljevstvu i da možemo sudjelovati, sudjelovati u tome. And of course that means we will be with the Lord forever. I naravno da to znači da ćemo za uvijek biti s Gospodinom. But that it starts now. Ali to počinje sada. And I, I, we went through briefly Psalm 23. I kratko smo prošli kroz Psalm 23. And saw how this is an Old Testament description of the very same phenomenon. I vidjeli kako je to starozavetni opis tog istog fenomena, iste pojave. What David experienced with the Lord, you can experience with the Lord. Ono što je David doživio s gospodinom i ti možeš doživjeti s gospodinom. But now, um, I'm going to give you a few points to understand in general how did how Jesus taught. Ali sada ću nabrojati nekoliko točaka onako općenito na koji način je Isus poučavao. Cuz it's <clears throat> it's can be difficult to understand. Jer može to biti teško razumjeti. Some of the most puzzling uh, verses in the Bible are verses that were said by Jesus. Neki od naj, uh, najviše izbunjujućih uh, redaka u Bibliji su riječi koje je rekao upravo Isus. The, the first thing, I have six, six things that will help you. Dakle, imam šest stvari koje će vam biti od pomoći, a prvo od njih je is that Jesus' teaching is descriptive. Da je Isusovo poučavanje bilo opisno. It is not, it is not prescriptive. I umjesto to, znači bilo je opisno, a ne da donosi propise. It is, so, he did not give laws. On dakle nije dao zakone. So we often can read some of what he says as if it's a law. Mi ponekad čitamo to što je on rekao kao da je zakon. But for he says, if somebody strikes you on the one cheek, turn the other. Jer on kaže, na primjer, ako te netko udari po jednom obrazu, okrenu mu i drugi. Uh, he says give to the person who asks. Ili kaže daj čovjeku koji traži od tebe. Does that mean that under every circumstance if somebody asks you for something you are required to give it? Znači li to da u svakoj okolnosti, u svim okolnostima ako netko nešto traži od tebe da mu ti moraš dati? He, to, when we take Jesus's teaching in that way ako shvatimo Isusov nauk na taj način, we're handling them just like the Pharisees did. Onda se ponašamo prema njemu kao što su se ponašali farizeji. We're, they're trying to find out what outward act, thing do I have to do in order to please God. I pokušavamo naći koje to stvari trebamo izvanski činiti da bismo ugodili Bogu. And so you could say Uh, somebody insults me by slapping me on the on the cheek. Na, na, znači možeš reći netko me uvrijedio tako da me pljusnuo po obrazu. Now that back then was more of an insult 
than an as- assault. Dakle, a u ono vremena prije to je više bila jedna uvreda nego manje, manje to bio napad. It, it's, it's not the point that if somebody is knocks you down and is beating you, you have to say, oh, you know, you, you missed this bit here, you know, this eye isn't black yet. Dakle, ne radi se o tome da netko te napadne i tučete, a onda mu kažeš, evo, tu si promašio, pa udari još da bude tu plavo. The, the point is, if you slap somebody, that was very, that very insulting to the person you're slapping. Nego poanta je da ako nekoga pljusneš, onda je to bilo jako uvredljivo. So, but if I say, okay, he is, he's slapped me, I'm going to give him the other cheek, ili ako onda kažem dobro on me pljusnuo pa onda okrenut ću mu drugi obraz and he slaps that cheek i onda i on me udari po tom obrazu now i have fulfilled that requirement right onda sam ispunio taj zahtjev za ne so i could then and go knock his block off i could just go after him too a onda mogu ja njega napast jer sam ispunio što je Isus rekao or i could start, start quietly making a plan on how i can embarrass him in public ili mogu onako u tišini početi smišljati kako da ja njega osramotim u javnosti. And we could do that and be completely in keeping with what Jesus said. Literally. I ako to učinim, dakle mogu mogu na taj način biti na onaj doslovan način sasvim u skladu s onim što Isus rekao. But that's not the point of Jesus' teaching. Ali to nije poanta Isusovog nauka. So and when he says was my other oh give Tim asks of you i a isto tako kad on kaže daj onome koji traži od tebe if you have a neighbor that you know is a has a is a, a gambling addict ako na primjer imaš susjeda koji je ovisnik o kockanju and he's constantly coming to you and asking you for stanje sto kuna i ako on stalno dolazi do tebe i traži te sto kuna and you know that that is going he's going to go down to the kladionica and lose it i a ti znaš da će on otići u kladionicu i to potrošiti would that be a loving thing to do. Bili to bio znak ljubavi da mu to učiniš, da mu daš? No. Ne. It doesn't, it doesn't, lo, you're not loving your neighbor doing ne. that. Ne, na taj način ne voliš svog susjeda. You, you're just keeping, you're making yourself feel better about the fact that you've done what it says. Nego naprosto činiš to da se osjećaš sam, dobro sam sa sobom zato jer si učinio upravo ono što je pisano. Ok, so when I say it is descriptive, this is what I mean. Kada, ka, kada kažem da su Isusove riječi opisne, to je to što sam mislio reći. He is describing what would be normal behavior of somebody who is connected to the kingdom of God. Nego on opisuje što bi bilo normalno ponašanje nekog koji je povezan sa Božjim kraljevstvom. If you really under, if you really understand the nearness of God. Ako doista razumiješ Božju blizinu, Then when somebody insults you, onda kad te netko uvrijedi, it won't matter. To ti neće imati veze. Because it doesn't matter if if other people think badly of you or if if you if you lose some social status because of that. Jer nije ti važno što ljudi misle o tebi ili ako izgubiš neki društveni položaj zbog toga. What's important is that you you have God himself. Jer ono što je važno tebi jest da imaš Boga samoga. How can it matter what this person does? Kako može imati veze što ta osoba čini? If a person is in need in need in is asking you for help, ili ako je neka osoba u potrebi i traži tvoju pomoć, then if you understand that you have a heavenly father that will always take care of you, onda ako ti razumiješ da imaš svog nebeskog oca koji će se uvijek brinuti za tebe, then it's much easier to say, okay, here's 50 50 kunas, I've got 50 kunas. Onda je puno lakše reći ti, evo imam 50 kuna, izvoli. I don't know where my, where I, you know, I was going to use that 50 kunas. <laughs> ja sam mislio potrošiti tih 50 kuna. But I'll be fine. Ali bit će sve u redu sa mnom. Um, and so this is, is just the normal behavior of, of somebody who, who understands this. Dakle, to je jedno normalno ponašanje osobe koja to razumije. And now I'm going to um, say something that may be shocking. A sad ću reći nešto što će možda biti šokantno. If you follow Jesus' teachings as laws, ako slijediš Isusov nauk kao da je to zakon, they will certainly ruin your life. Tada ćeš sigurno uništiti svoj život. They will ruin your life. To će uništiti tvoj život. It, to follow those as laws uh, will le- leaves you nothing to live on. Jer slijediti to kao da je zakon neće ti ostaviti ništa u životu. And, and if you follow them 
as a law, then you're not doing this in connection with the kingdom of God and with the provision of the Lord. Jer ako te riječi shvatiš kao zakon, onda nećeš biti u, povezan sa Bogom u Božjem kraljevstvu. You, you're doing this out of your own strength. Nego to činiš iz svoje snage. And that, that, is, that is the way to, to frustration and failure. I to je put koji vodi u frustraciju, koji vodi u promašaj. And this is where we have people in, in churches i imamo u crkvama ljude um, who are kind of inside they're just kind of bitter koji su nekako ogorčeni who don't really like it when other people are enjoying things koji ma nije drago kad drugi ljudi uživaju u stvarima and they, they kind of have a negative view on things i nekako negativno gledaju na stvari because they have spent their life giving things up for god jer su proveli svoj život odričući se stvari za boga but they have never or rarely experienced exchanging things for god ali nikada ili rijetko su doživjeli to da razmjenjuju stvari za boga god doesn't say to you i want you to stop doing everything fun i a bog ti ne kaže ti ćeš ti trebaš prestati činiti sve što je zabavno but what he what he might say is this particular thing in your life i'd like you to to change this ali može ti reći da ta jedna konkretna stvar u tvom životu ja bih htio da ti to promijeniš. Because I have something so much better for you. Jer imam nešto što je puno bolje za tebe. I'd, I'd like you, you know, young husband to not go and be playing World of Tanks for four hours on the computer blowing up tanks every night. I, a ti kao mladi suprug od tebe ne želim da svaku večer provodiš 4 sata igrajući onu igricu sa razbijanjem tenkova. Instead I want to connect you with your wife in much better ways than that. Nego želim da se povežeš sa svojom ženom na mnogo bolji način od ovoga što sad ti you know, this, is, this is messing up your life. Jer to ti uništava život. So it's, it's not the point I want you to give up the fun thing. Dakle poanta nije želim da se odrekneš svega što je zabavno. The point is God says I have something much better for you. Nego Bog kaže imam nešto puno bolje za tebe. And, and sometimes it's I want you just to clear the noise out of your head. Ili ponekad naprosto želi očistiti tvoj um od šuma koji tu postoji. So that in those quiet moments when you close your eyes i da onda u tim trenucima tišine kada im, kada zatvor, zatvoriš oči and I want to speak to you a, i kada ti želim govoriti kaže Bog. You don't see in front of your face a tank blowing up here and there on, on this with this game or a TV show that constantly is 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 in your in your mind. Ne želim da pred očima ti skaču slike tih tenkova koji se raspadaju ili slike iz televizijskih emisija. Yeah, and I'm not, saying, I'm not saying those things are 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 wrong or bad things. Ne kažem da su te stvari pogrešne ili da su loše. I'll admit. Priznam. I have blown up hundreds if not thousands of tanks online. I ja sam online uništio stotine, možda i tisuće tenkova. Um, but uh, I don't do that anymore. Ali to više ne činim. Because in my life it became got to a point where it was no longer profitable for me. Jer u mom životu to je došlo do točke kada to više nije bilo korisno za mene. So, the point I'm making is that we should we should take what Jesus says as describing the normal behavior of of uh, uh, his followers. Dakle, o, ž, moja poanta je da shvatimo ovo što Isus govori da je to opis normalnog ponašanja njegovih sljedbenika. Okay. This, so the first one is his teaching is descriptive. Dakle, prva točka bila je da je njegov na, nauk opisan. The second one is Jesus remember this context that where he taught. Dakle, je on umo njegov kontekst u kojem on poučava, znači druga točka jest da people are nobody is recording this on a they have no way of recording this dakle imate na umu da nitko to ne zapisuje nemaju načina kako to snimiti that people they're not going to print you know when they're done the notes hey can i have your notes from the sermon on the mount Jesus? i nakon što isus je završio propoved na gori on je mogao reći nisu ga mogli pitati hey mogu li kopirati tvoje bilješke and so i can I'll, I'll photocopy them and give them out to the pe- members of the synagogue. I kopirat ću ih pa ću ih podijeliti u sinagogi. People had to listen and remember what he said. Ljudi su morali slušati i zapamtiti ono što je on govorio. Okay, so the second one is often he said things that were very shocking and on, extreme. On je često rekao stvari koje su bile jako šokantne i jako krajnje ekstremne. So that they would, they would be extreme examples Dakle, to bili su to jedni krajni ekstremni primjeri so that people would remember 
the point he's making. Da bi ljudi se lakše sjetili, da bi lakše zapamtili poantu koju on želi prenijeti. Okay, he said when you have a party, on kaže kada priređuješ gozbu, do not invite your family and friends. Onda nemoj pozivati na gozbu svoju obitelj, svoje prijatelje. Instead invite people who are poor and could never invite you to a party. Nego pozovi umjesto njih ljude koji su siromašni koji te neće za uzvrat moći pozvati kod sebe na gozbu. The kind of people that you will get you will gain nothing socially from having them at your party. Pozovi takve ljude od kojih nećeš moći dobiti nikakvu društvenu korist ako ih pozoveš na svoju gozbu. Now, how many of us have disobeyed that by inviting family members to our house? Koliko od nas je prekršilo tu zapovijed pozivajući svoje prijatelje k sebi doma? Clearly Jesus is not does not literally mean you may never invite the people of your your you know those close to you to your house. Jesus očito nije zabranio da pozivaš ljude koji su ti bliski u svoj dom. You see he's making a point so that people will think about that. Why would he say that? Nego on želi nešto poručiti da bi ljudi razmišljali a zašto tako govori? And and it would remind them every time they have people over i svaki put kad bi pozvali ljude u goste, posjetilo bi ih. Or that they go to as a guest to somebody's house. Ili ako oni sami kao gosti odu kod nekoga. It would remind them of the real values of the kingdom of God. Posjetilo bi ih na prave vrednote kraljevstva Božje. Which is not using our social, the, the social things to um, benefit ourselves. Koje bi, koje bi znači glasile da, kada, da ne koristimo svoje društvene odnose da bismo mi stekli neku korist. So because he said that shocking thing, people will remember his main point the rest of their lives. Je, i na tamilu toga što je Isus upotrijebio tako šokantnu izjavu, ljudi će ostatak svog života zapamtiti tu njegovu poantu. Hey, the, the third point. Treća točka which is very related to what I've said already. Koja je već jako jako povezana s ovim što sam već rekao. That his teaching is focused on the heart. Njegov nauk usredotočava se na srce. He offers to transform your heart. On daje ponudu da će transformirati tvoje srce. To make you into the kind of person who will do what is good. Da će te pretvoriti u osobu koja će htjeti činiti dobro. Who you are is far more important than what you do. Ono što ti jesi je mnogo važnije od onoga što si učinio. If you ask the question, who is a thief? Postavi si pitanje, tko je lopov? Um, who is an adulterer? Tko je preljubnik? Because um, in, in heaven there are no thieves and no adulterers. Jer u nebu nema ni lopova ni preljubnika. And see, a, a, a Pharisee would say, Oh, I'm not a thief or an adulterer. I've never stolen anything and I've never committed adultery. Jer farizej će reći, ja nisam ni lopov, ni preljubnik, jer nisam nikad ništa ukrao, a nisam ni počinio prelju. But a thief is not somebody who's never stolen, or uh, who has stolen. Ali lopov nije osoba koja je ukrala, koja krade. A thief is someone who would steal under, under particular circumstances. Nego lopov je osoba koja bi ukrala u određenim okolnostima. An adulterer is somebody who would commit adultery under certain circumstances. I preljubnik je osoba koja bi počinjala preljub u određenim okolnostima. Yeah. If you, know, you get in a time machine and go back to 1872, now there's no way people are going to find out about what happened. Ako se vratiš u pomoću... Oga, t- vreme plova u 1872. godinu nema načina da bi lju- ljudi saznali što se tamo dogodilo. So under those circumstances would you commit adultery? I da recimo onda u tim okolnostima počiniš preljub. Um, then you have the heart of an adulterer. Onda znači imaš to srce preljubničko. And this is not the Pharisees did not understand this. I farizeji nisu to razumjeli. And our society does not understand this at all. I naše društvo uopće to ne razumije. We don't understand the capacity of good and nice people to do great evil under certain circumstances. Mi ne razumijemo sposobnost dobrih ljudi da u određenim uvjetima čine zlo. It's like we have put some um, beton over the top of our broken hearts. To je kao da smo izdili beton iznad svojih srdaca. So the when we 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 live our lives is like we're, our, our heart the top layer of our heart is fine. 
I tako ispada da živimo svoje živote i čini se da onaj gornji sloj našeg srca je u redu. But if you go to um, under certain circumstances you find that when people are pushed you find out that down below that there's anger, there's rage, there's fear. Ili, ali ako ljude dovedemo u određene okolnosti, situacije, onda vidimo da tamo ima i bijesa, i ljutnje, i straha. Um, and in fact, this, it, it's, it's the kind of thing that, that this, this region of the world can say they, they, people have, have seen in the in past decades. I u ovom dijelu svijeta to se jako dobro vidjelo, znači u prošlim, prošlih nekoliko desetljeća, ta uh, pojava. The, the, the capacity of people who are nice ta sposobnost dobrih ljudi to suddenly do horrible things. Da odjednom čine strašne stvari. It, it shows that our hearts down underneath we are shattered and broken. To pokazuje da su na, da u, u dubini svojih srdaca da smo slomljeni. So Jesus offers to transform the heart. I Isus dakle nu, daje ponudu da će transformirati srce so that you naturally do what is right and good. Da ćeš onda prirodno činiti ono što je dobro i što je ispravno. And this is um, a lifelong process in your in your life. I to je doživotan proces u tvom životu. And and for us when we the Lord will sometimes give us a glimpse of how broken our heart is. I gospodin će nam ponekad, ponekad dati kratak uvid kako, kako, kako je slomljeno naše srce. And that's a good thing. I to je dobra stvar. Because we can see ourselves and, and see and be very disappointed sometimes. Jer ponekad mi možemo gledati sebe i biti jako razočarani. You, you have a situation where a person um, like I remember thinking of myself as somebody who doesn't get offended. Na primjer, sjećam se da sam razmi, razmišljao o sebi da sam osoba koja se ne vrijeđa lako. Um, be, and it was because of the work the Lord had done in my life for many, many, many years. I misleći da je to nešto što je Gospodin u mom životu postigao kroz mnoge godine. But then somebody said something which displayed um, the, I, I saw that they, they treated me like somebody who has, does it really doesn't know anything at all, like an ignorant sort of ignorant person. A onda je netko nešto rekao i pokazalo se da ta osoba misli o meni da sam ja neki potpuno neznalica, da ništa ne znam. Uh, and, and what I have to say, I mean, why would they even think about my, my opinion doesn't really matter. I ispalo je da u nekoj stvari nije uopće bilo važno moje mišljenje, zašto bi me pitali kad ništa ne znam. And it's like somebody stuck a needle down inside me. Arrgh! I kao da netko me ubo iglom. So then I realize, whoa, there is, I have been healed in some ways. I onda sam shvatio da iscijeljen sam na sam na neke neke načine, neki način. But because of my pride, ali zbog mog ponosa. There is still part of me that that sort of a crack that extends farther closer to the surface, if you know what I mean. Postoji jedan dio mene, postoji jedna pukotina koja se probija sve do površine. If they push me right here, i ako me pritisnu baš ovdje, oh, it still hurts. Yeah, još uvijek boli. Yeah, so Um, that was something then I had to start giving over to the Lord and letting go. I to je nešto što sam mora opet predavati Gospodinu i dozvoliti da to ode od mene. And that's a good thing. I to je dobra stvar. Because the Lord always knew that was there. Jer Gospodin je oduvijek znao da je to ovdje. I'm disappointed to see that. Ja sam razočaran što sam to vidio. But he's not disappointed. Ali on nije razočaran. He saw that but when he died for me he knew that. On je već to vidio kad je umro za mene, on je to znao. He knows all the cracks in your soul. On zna sve pukotine u tvojoj duši. And he isn't surprised. I on nije iznenađen. And he wa- what he wants from you A od tebe on želi is that you be honest with him. Da budeš iskren pred njim. And tell him, yes, I am broken in this way. I da mu kažeš, da gospodine, slomljen sam ili pokvaren na tom i tom području. You can tell him I'm disappointed in you. I reći mu da sam razočaran. And whatever, I mean, he wants honesty. Što god, on želi da budemo iskreni. And as we do this, is heart transforming. I dok to činimo, naše srce se transformira. Okay, so the first point is, Jesus' teaching is descriptive. Dakle, prva točka bila da je Isusov nauk opisan. That he used extreme shocking examples. Zatim da je koristio ekstremne šokira, šokiraviće primjere. In order to help people remember. Da bi pomogao ljudima da ih zapamte. And third that his teaching focuses on transforming the heart. 
I treće da njegov nauk se fokusira na transformaciju srca. It starts inside and behavior comes out of it. Počinje to iznutra i iz toga proizlazi ponašanje. Behavior outward <clears throat> does not transform your heart. Izvanjsko ponašanje ne transformira tvoje srce. Okay, the fourth point, četvrta točka is that his teaching is largely about participating in God's kingdom now. Da je njegov nauk se bavi većim dijelom sudjelovanjem u Božjem kraljevstvu sada. And when we think about this, this can actually change how we read some of his stories. I kada razmišljamo o ovome, to zapravo može promijeniti način na koji čitamo neke od njegovih priča. Like in Luke 14, kao na primjer u Luki 14, there is a story of the uh, a wealthy man that had a big feast. I imamo priču o bogatašu koji je napravio gozbu. And when it was time for the feast, i kada je nastupilo vrijeme za tu gozbu, the guests said, oh, I can't come for this reason, I can't come for that reason. Gosti su počeli govoriti, a ne mogu doći iz ovog razloga ili iz onog razloga. And the reasons are transparently false. A ti razlozi su onako očito lažni. They would be like if somebody said they had told you they're going to come to your your party. To je kao da netko kaže da će doći na tvoju gozbu. And they say, "Oh, sorry, I've just bought a house." I onda kaže, "A, oh, oprosti, a baš sam kupio kuću." And I need to actually go take a look at it because I've never seen it. I moram je zapravo otići pogledati jer je zapravo nikad nisam vidio. Who, who would buy a house a never bi, having seen it? Tko bi kupio kuću a da je prije toga nije vidio? Yeah. So, um, so they have these these excuses. Dakle, oni imaju te izgovore. And the Lord, the The master says, "Go out and bring in poor, the poor people." I onda gospodar kaže, "Izađite i dovedite siromahe." And then when they said there's still room. I onda kažu, "A, ima još prostora." Um, now, in Jesus' story, the people who reject it are they represent the leaders, the rich people, the wealthy and the the religious leaders. U Isusovoj priči, dakle, ti gosti prvi u zvanici predstavljaju bogate vođe društvene, dakle vjerske vođe. But the common people are coming into the kingdom of God. Ali obični ljudi ulaze u kraljevstvo Božje. And there's still room. I još ima mjesta. So he says go out into the into the and get the beggars and people who live on the street. Kaže izađite i dovedite dovedite prosjake, ljude koji žive na ulici. And force them to come in. I prisilite ih da uđu. Now force is the only reason he uses the word force. I jedini razlog zašto koristi riječ da ih prisile is that in this context a, a master may say you're invited to the feast. I da u ovoj priči dakle taj gospodar može reći da si pozvan na gozbu. Like he might say everybody in the town is invited to this feast. Na primjer može reći svi u gradu pozvani su na tu gozbu. Uh, because he wants to look generous. Ja želi da ispadne da je on uh, darežljiv. But everybody knows there are people who are not actually invited. Ali svi znaju da zapravo postoje ljudi koji nisu pozvani. And so those people, those kind of people, you would actually have to push them to to come through the door because they would be so ashamed. I onda ti ljudi koji se znaju da nisu zapravo pozvani, nju bi trebalo prisiliti gurati kroz vrata jer bi se sramili doći tamo. And so here's the here's the, the A point we we I have always heard that story as a, a story about who is going to heaven. I ja sam odvijek slušao tu priču kao da govori o tome tko će ući u nebo. But if you think about it as a story about the kingdom of God. Ali ako razmišljate o njoj kao priči koja govori o kraljevstvu Božjem. He's talking about who right now in his day is actually experiencing and seeing the blessing of God. On govori o tome da tko upravo u tom trenutku u njegovo vrijeme doživljava iskustvo Božjeg kraljevstva. And in the end of the story, this is not in the Luke, but I think the Matthew version. I na, a na kraju priče koja se ne nalazi u Luke nego mislim da u Mateju. Um, you have a, a man who is there in the, um, who shows up and is not wearing the wedding clothes that were provided. Nalazimo čovjeka koji se našao na toj gozbi, a koji tko ne nosi odgovarajuću odjeću. And the master says, ponuđena. how are you not here in the wedding clothes I provided? I pita ga, gospodar, kako to da nisi odjeven u odjeću koju sam ja osigurao za tebe? Throw this guy out. Izbacite tog čovjeka. Um, and with, where there's weeping and, in, in the outer darkness where there's weeping and gnashing of teeth. U krajnju tamu gdje će biti škrgut zuba i plač. Now this, I've always heard this as being about final judgment. Odvijek sam slušao da se da se tu radi o onom konačnom sudu. But if you think about it this way, 
ali ako razmišljate o tome na sljedeći način, malo drugačije. And that is that this person who is there not in wedding in in the provided wet if uh, robes da ta osoba koja je nije odjenula dakle tu tu svadbenu odjeću koja je bila osigurana za nju um is is this the person who is going to be part of God's kingdom their own way je to osoba koja želi biti dio Božje kraljevstva na svoj način there are it's a warning that there are people who think that they oh I like Jesus yeah I'm I'm fine you know but they're not particularly concerned with doing things Jesus entering the kingdom through Jesus. To je to su takle ljudi koji na svoj način žele ući u kraljevstvo i koje nije posebno briga što Isus kaže. Those people think that they are in the wedding feast. Ti ljudi misle da su na toj sad, na, da su na toj svadbenoj gozbi. But in fact they are in the darkness and frustrated like everybody else outside the feast. Ali oni su zapravo u tami i frustrirani su kao i svi ostali koji nisu koji su vani nisu na toj gozbi. And so So the his teaching is largely about participating in in God's kingdom now. Dakle njegov nauk se većinom bavi sudjelovanjem u Božjem kraljevstvu sada. Although he does talk about final judgment. I ako on govori i o zadnjem sudu. Um now the fifth point. Peta točka is that Jesus taught in parables. Kaže da je Isus poučavao u usporedbama. And it says he did this and he quotes Isaiah so that people would be would be able to listen and not understand. I onda citira Izaju i kaže da bi ljudi mogli slušati a da ne razumiju. And so the reason Je- that another way to put it the reason that Jesus um did this drugim riječima razlog zašto je Isus to činio is that God allows people to hide from him if that's what they want jest da Bog dozvoljava ljudima da se skrivaju pred njim ako ljudi to žele. He, he, he does, um, this is the, the doctrine of the hiddenness of God if you ever want to look dakle, into it. to je nauk o Božoj skrivenosti ako želite to pogledati. That we find that, that God is hidden and that, that is an act of love on his part. I da, da vidimo zapravo da je Bog skriven i da je to jedan čin ljubavi s njegove strane. That he wants real relationship with us. Da on želi stvaran odnos s nama. And in fact if we look back at the Old Testament, i zapravo ako pogledamo natrag u Stari zavjet, when God did not do act like this, kada se Bog nije ponašao na ovaj način, like when the children of Israel were going through the the Sinai, kao na primjer kad su djeca Izraelova išli na Sinaj, they could see God in the shape of a pillar of fire. Mogli su vidjeti Boga u obliku ognjenog stupa. He fed them every day, literally each family with just enough food for each family. I on je svakoga dana doslovno hranio o svaku obitelj sa dovoljno hrane. So he was not hidden. Dakle on nije bio skriven. They couldn't hide from him. Oni se nisu mogli sakriti pred njim. And they were the weakest most generation ever with the least faith. I oni su bili najslabija generacija ikad, generacija s najmanje vjere. So from that we can conclude that though we don't understand it, i iz toga možemo zaključiti da bez obzira na to što mi to ne možemo razumjeti, it is good that God hides. Dobro je da se Bog skriva. And so Jesus did deliberately say things in a difficult manner. I zato je Isus namjerno govorio stvari na jedan težak način. Because if you so that if you really want to understand, jer ako ti doista želiš razumjeti, you you do have to think about it, meditate on it, ask him for help with it. Mora ćeš o tome razmišljati, promišljati i tražiti njegovu pomoć. You do have to seek him. Moraš ga tražiti. He isn't a friend that's going to come over every day and and watch nogomet with you. On nije prijatelj koji dolazi svaki dan do tebe pa da zajedno gledate nogomet. Whether you want it or not. Htio ti to ili ne. Uh, he's a friend that says you can come over to my place Nego anytime on, you want. On je prijatelj koji kaže ti možeš doći kod mene kad god to poželiš. Then every time that you're together. A onda svaki put kad ste zajedno. Because you want to be there. Tamo si zato jer si ti htio doći. So, Jesus is teaching this descriptive. Dakle, Jesus od nauke opisan. He was shocking on purpose. Bio je namjerno šokantan. He focuses on the heart, transforming the heart and behavior coming out of that. Fokusira se na srce i na ponašanje koje proizlazi iz tog srca. His teaching is largely about participating 
in God's kingdom right now. Njegov nauk se većim dijelom bavio sudjelovanjem u Božjem kraljestvu upravo sada. And he taught in parables so that people could hide from him if they wanted to. I poučavao je u prispodobama da se ljudi mogu sakriti pred njim ako to žele. And the last one i posljednja točka is in the Middle East. U na Bliskom istoku if if somebody says no kad netko kaže ne or go away ili odlazi that is not the end of the conversation. To nije kraj razgovora. That is a pause in the conversation. Nego to je pauza u razgovoru. If your friend if you have a, is having a party and you're late. Ako tvoj prijatelj priređuje gozbu a ti kasniš na tu gozbu. No this I don't know if this is a great example. I, I don't know about lateness how important this is to them. Ne znam uh, je li dovoljno do, 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 dobar primjer, ne znam koliko je važno to kasniš li ili ne. But I, I do understand this that if if he says no no, no you're, you're, there's no room for you or no it's, you're too late. Onda, go away. ali razumijem to ako ti kaže ne ne prekasn si nema mjesta za tebe. That that you can come back. To znači and try again. Se možeš opet vratiti, pokušati ponovo. And in fact, he probably expects you to come back. zapravo and try again. očekuje da ćeš se vratiti opet. I, I read that if you get if you get fired, i čitao sam da ako ti daju otkaz na poslu, then the the, the, the worker thinks, "Oh wow, my boss is mad at me." Onda radnik može misliti, "A, moj šef se ljuti na mene." I better get um, my most influential friends together to help me to make things right with this boss and convince him to Možda doista trebam right. naći prijatelja koji ima utjeca i koji će mi pomoći da se pomirim s, t- s tim svojim šefom. I did not um, you don't assume oh I've just lost my job. Ne, ne pretpostavljaš ono na prvu kao ah eto ostao sam bez posla. And this it will change the way we read some of the stories Jesus told. I to će promijeniti način na koji čitamo neke od priča koje je Isus govorio. You know there's the story of 10 young women who are waiting for a bridegroom. Sjećate se priča o 10 djevica koje čekaju mladoženu. And they had their lamps with oil. I ponjale su svoje svjetiljke sa uljem. And they have their oil lamps not actually so they can see where they're going. I ja te svjetiljke nose ne zato da bi vidjele kuda idu. Women carried lamps at night. Nego žene su noću nosile svjetiljke. But not men. A ne muškarci. Um, the women carried a lamp so that their face would be lit up. Tako da bi se njihovo lice, da bi njihovo lice bilo osvjetljeno. So everybody can know who they are, where they're going and they're not doing anything bad. I da bi svatko mogao vidjeti tko su, uh, kamo idu i da ne čine nešto loše. So they all have their their lamps and five of them run out of oil, right? I dakle, sve one su imale te svjetiljke, a pet njih nestalo je ulja. And so the bridegroom comes while they're running and trying to get more oil. Dolaze mladoženja i one odlaze i da bi nabavile još ulja. And the, when they come back the bridegroom says sorry too late I've closed the door. Ali kad se vrate mladoženja kaže a prekasno zatvorio sam vrata. Well we use this this story typically to be about going to heaven. I mi obično najčešće koristimo tu priču da govori o tome o odlasku u nebo, ulasku u nebo. Jesus' point is that we need to be always alert and ready. A Isusova poanta je da trebamo uvijek biti spremni, uvijek trebamo biti prisebni. But to a, a Middle Easterner, when they read this, ali za osobu iz Bliskog Istoka kada to čita, the story doesn't have an ending. Ta priča nema kraj. That Jesus left it open. Nego je Isus ostavio otvoren kraj. And you're supposed to ask yourself what? What are the kinds of things that could happen? How could this play out? I trebaš se zapravo pitati što se moglo dogoditi, kako se to moglo dalje odigrati. What um yeah, what what is the bridegroom really like? Kakav je zapravo taj mladoženja? Is he does he seem like the type who would say no, you're done? Čini li se on da je vrsta osobe koja može reći ne, ne možeš ući. Um it's just a something to keep in mind. Nešto što treba držati na umu. So the last one is in the Middle East no or get out is not the end of the story. Dakle zadnja točka je da na Bliskom istoku kada se nekome kaže ne ili odlazi treba to ne to nije kraj priče. Okay. Now, no I don't know what our schedule is. Dobro, ne znam like when, we, we have a pause at what time do I? Like do you have a 20 minute pause like before? Možemo. I mean because I'm Okay. What I'd like to do, dakle sad bih htio učiniti sljedeće, is you look specifically at konkretno the Sermon on the Mount. Propovjed na gori. Matthew 5. 
Matei 5. Because the Sermon on the Mount can look like something that is a rather disorganized set of, of ed- commandments and advice given by Jesus. Jer možda nam se čini da je ta propoved na gori jedna skupina zapovjedi i savjeta koje daje Isus. But actually it breaks down into five nice sections. Ali zapravo se može lijepo podijeliti u pet dijelova. And it does have a, uh, a logic to it. I u tome ima logike. And in fact, as a master teacher, you should uh, you shouldn't be surprised that Jesus has this set up in in a way so that you do need to sort of understand and master the earlier sections before you get to the later sections. I zapravo Isus koji je dan veliki učitelj, od njega možemo očekivati da da je lekcije gdje uh, na, pre, na temelju prethodne lekcije koju savladate, savladate onda i neku sljedeću lekciju. And that's why if you people will open up to the middle of the sermon on the mount and say this is too hard. I z- zato se ona događa da ljudi otvore mo propovjed na gori na sredini i kažu a to je nešto preteško. Um me especially love your enemies. Na primjer kad kaže ljubite svoje neprijatelje. That's I believe the hardest of Jesus's commandments. I vjerujem da je to jedna najteža Isusova zapovijed. Well, Jesus is teachings. Ili Isusov nauk. Although it is a, that is a command. I ako to zapravo je love zapovjed ljubiti svog neprijatelja. Um and but if you have already worked your way through and mastered the earlier lessons he said ali ako si savladao lekcije one ranije koje već on rekao then loving your enemies becomes something that is at least within sight that he might be able to do someday tada je ljubav prema neprijatelju barem na vidiku na horizontu nečega što ćeš jednog dana biti sposoban činiti but that isn't going to happen um, unless the lord sometimes does do a great um, miraculous work in your heart in Ali, for a specific case to se neće dogoditi a, o, ako gospodin ne učini jedno posebno veliko djelo u tvome srcu za jedan konkretan slučaj but, but that does not naturally flow out of it out of the human heart jer to ne izlazi onako prirodno iz ljudskog srca. Unless it's already been repaired and healed in many other ways. Osim ako to srce nije popravljeno i iscijeljeno na mnoge druge načine. Okay, in the Sermon on the Mount. Dakle, u propovjedi na gori. Matthew 5. U Mateju 5. Uh, from th- verses 3 to 20. Od 3. do 20. redka. Jesus addresses, what he's doing is addressing the question of who is truly blessed. Isus se bavi pitanjem tko je zaista blagoslovljen. And it begins with, you know, blessed are the poor in spirit for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Počinje riječima blaženi siromašni duhom jer njihovo je kraljevstvo nebesko. You know, and blessed are those who mourn for they shall be comforted. Blaženi ozalošćeni jer oni će biti utješeni. And you notice this is very similar. I primjećujete um, da je to vrlo slično to what to the passage in Luke that Jesus read when he started his teaching in the book of Luke. I vidimo da je to slično onom odlomku u Luki kada vidi kada je on počeo naučavati. The Lord has anointed me to bring proclaim, you know, blessing on the poor. Dakle, the blind, me the prisoner. Pomazao da donesem blagoslov siromašnima, onima koji su zatočeni, onima koji su slijepi. The, these are people who the world considers unblessable. To su ljudi koje svijet smatra nedostojnima blagoslova. And Jesus comes to them and says, I am proclaiming to you the favorable year of the Lord. A Isus im dolazi i kaže im ja vam proglašavam godinu Božje naklonosti. So here he says, you who mourn and weep. Kaže vi koji ste žalošći, ožalošćeni koji plačete, blessed are you. Blaženi ste because you the, the kingdom of God extends all the way to you. I kaže blagoslovljeni ste zato jer Božje kraljevstvo se proteže sve do vas. And when it says the poor in spirit. A kaže isto tako siromašni duhom. We the Christians through the centuries have massaged this phrase to try to figure out how it's good to be poor in spirit. Mi kršćani smo nekako drobili, masirali taj izraz siromašni duhom kroz stoljeća da bismo saznali što to znači, kako biti blago, kako biti siromašan u duhu. So we've come to the point that we we uh, assume that it means humble. Da bismo došli do točke u kojoj smatramo da to znači biti ponizan. Uh, but actually the phrase poor in spirit, ali zapravo izraz siromašni duhom means spiritually poor. Znači biti duhovno siromašan. What that means is a person who is literally spiritually poor, 
To znači da osoba koja je doslovno duhovno siromašna is who is a spiritual zero. je netko tko je duhovna nula. The kind of person nobody would ever ask their advice. To je vrsta osoba koju nitko nikad ne bi pitao za savjet. You know, his ex-wife hates him. Tu tog čovjeka mrzi bivša žena. His two kids don't want to talk to him. Njegovo dvoje djece ne žele razgovarati s njim. He struggle, struggles with several addictions. Uh, bori se sa nekoliko ovisnosti. Um, people look down on him. Ljudi gledaju na njega s visoka. He's, that is somebody who is poor. To je netko tko je siromašan duhom. But blessed is that man. Ali blagoslovljen je taj čovjek. Because this very day he can touch the kingdom of God. Je upravo danas on može dotaći kraljevstvo Bože. When you're weeping and crying because of real savage pain in your life. Kada doista plačeš zbog strašne boli u svom životu. Blessed are you. Blagoslovljen si. Not because not not that this terrible thing is why God's going to bless you is is like well you did this had this bad thing happen so now you get a, a good thing. I ne, ne radi se o tome da ti se događa sa to nešto grozno pa ćeš sada dobiti nešto dobro. Ne, rather that this bad thing that has happened will cannot keep you from being in touch with the kingdom of God. Nego ta loša stvar koja ti se dogodila ne može spriječiti da budeš u kontaktu u kontaktu sa Božjim kraljevstvom. Um, and if you as you look at these um, I'll admit the first time that I read an interpretation of these beatitudes Friznajem da prvi put kad sam pročitao ovo tumačenje ovih blaženstava which, which says instead of being a list of it, it, they are not a list of characteristics we need to try to be gdje to objašnjenje kaže da umjesto da je ovo shva, shvatimo kao popis karakteristika oko kojih se trebamo truditi postati takvi these are actually a, a description of 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 people in bad circumstances ovo su zapravo opisi ljudi koji se nalaze u teškim u situacijama who and a proclamation of blessing on those people to je zapravo objava blagoslova tim ljudima Um, I had a hard I had a hard time accepting it the first time. I sprva teško mi je bilo prihvatiti to. It took me about three years before Tre- I before I shifted my thinking. Trebalo mi je oko tri godine prije nego što sam promijenio svoje mišljenje. Um, so if you because as you take this idea and read it, you're going to hit two of these two of these and going to think, wait a minute, that doesn't make sense. I ako prihvatite ovu ideju i čitate, onda ćete naletiti na dvije stvari za koje ćete reći, e, čekaj malo, ali to nema smisla. Well, verse 8, are the pure in heart. Posebno osmi redak gdje kaže, blaženi su koji su čista srca. Jer biti čista srca je sigurno dobra stvar. Or somebody who hungers and thirsts for righteousness. Ili netko tko je gladan i žedan pravednosti. Um, now I, um, I now I, I think that the hunger and thirst for righteousness is somebody who does not have righteousness. I mislim da, a sada mislim da zapravo osoba koja je gladna i žedna pravednosti je netko tko nema pravednosti. The person who hungers and thirsts for righteousness Osoba koja je gladna i žedna pravednosti is the guy who hates the fact that he wants to borrow a hundred kunas from you so he can go blow it again. But je, he just can't stop. Je čovjek koji mrzi to što želi opet je posuditi sto kuna i opet ih potrošiti i da naprosto to ne može prestati činiti. And inside he hates the fact that he says I want to borrow it but he knows he's never going to give it back. I iznutra mrzi činjenicu što će reći a posudit ću to od tebe a zna da nikad neće vratiti. Um, or in the, in the, the person pure in heart a osoba koja je čista srca my current understanding of it moje trenutno shvaćanje toga uh, that, that I've come to do kojeg sam evo došao is the, the pure in heart would be somebody who is the kind of person that um, inside uh, is very critical of, of, of everything nothing is ever good enough koja je to je osoba koja je iznutra vrlo kritična da nikad ništa nije dovoljno dobro and, and, and they then present themselves that they're perfect and they always have to be perfect i uvijek se predstavlja kao nekog ko je savršen koji uvijek mora biti savršen um, Because those people inside are filled with tension. Yeah, ti ljudi su u sebi puni napetosti. Because on one level, one level they know they're not they're not perfect. Yeah, na jednoj razini znaju da nisu savršeni. But if you look, you can compare this on your own to the 
in Luke when he does the same uh, he does the Luke's version uh, of the same set of teaching. I sami možete usporediti ovoga što kaže u Mateju i tu drugu verziju ko, uh, iste stvari u Luki. Which is in uh, just for you, so you know Luke chapter 6 starting in verse 20. To je Luka 6:20, tamo počinje. Yeah, we um, I won't we won't be reading it. I just want you to know. Nećemo kind of... to čitati, ali samo da znate gdje je. Is that there these beatitudes include the opposite. Tamo u Luki ta ta blaženstva sadrže i onu obrnutu stranu. It says suprotno. Um he says that the wealthy are not blessed. Kaže da oni koji su bogati nisu blagoslovljeni. And so this I think highlights um more that his point is not saying that these are characteristics you have to have if you want to be blessed. Dakle, tu više naglašava tu stranu da ovo nisu stvari koje trebate po, koje trebate te oponašati da biste bili blagoslovljeni. He is instead um, changing people's understanding of what blessing is, challenging their understanding of blessing. Nego zapravo stavlja izazov na ljudsko shvaćanje blagoslova, okay. što su zapravo blagoslovi. Okay, so To finish the, this section, the, it's like we, we, won't, we don't have time to go through this verse by verse, by any means. Nemamo vremena da bismo prošli ovo redak po redak. But he does say in the rest of this section, he is basically saying to the common people, Ali on they zapravo, are the ones who are blessed. Obični ljudima govori u tom odlomku da su oni, ti bla, obični ljudi da su blagoslovljeni. That they're the salt of the earth. <clears throat> da su oni sol zemlje. That they can be a light shining. Da oni mogu biti svjetlo koje sja. And at the end of the section he says your righteousness has to be different beyond that of the scribes and Pharisees. I na kraju ovog odlomka kaže da vaša pravednost treba biti veća od pravednosti farizeja i pismoznanaca. Remember, the, the, and the scribes and Pharisees were in their time those everybody thought were the spiritually blessed. Jer u to vrijeme svi su mislili da su farizeji ti koji su duhovno blagoslovljeni. And Jesus' point is going to be your righteousness has to be not about outward behavior. A Isusova poanta je da vaša pravednost ne bi se trebala svoditi na to izvanjsko ponašanje. Now I think just as a teacher I look at the time and think we need to have a, a, a break because it's just hard to keep listening for a long time. Kao učitelj so, mislim da trebamo pauzu jer teško je slušati dulje vrijeme. 10 minuta može. Okay. 10 minutes. Let's have a break.